The third principle of responsible lending for us is about being selective. So even when we're transparent and even when we've given a lot of flexibility and control to the customer, even then we realize that there are times when it is inappropriate to borrow. And that's where our data comes into account. And that is where we use you know, these 8,000 odd pieces of data to make decisions. And as I said, the, vast ma the majority of customers we reject. In the end, we decline to lend their money in that particular point in time because we do not feel like it is the most appropriate thing to do. And so in, to our minds, that's how we think about responsibility. That's embedded in everything that we do in the business. It's embedded in the training that people get when they join the company and in the products that, that you see when, you know, that, that Wonga puts out in the market. But you know, all of that said and done, as David uh, pointed out, Wong is in a controversial space. It's in a controversial space, we think, not so much because of what we do, but because of the history that people, the history and, the, and the, some of the, the, the ways, the, you know, the way that people have historically thought about the space, the connotations of what we do. And so we've pushed the boundaries even further. To put, you know, we, we do customer service on Facebook. You know, today we have over 260,000 friends on Facebook. Like, find a bank that's got over 260,000 fans on Facebook. We do because people engage with us in a very social, real way, and we are very transparent. What you see here is a site called Open Wonga that you may be interested in having a look at, not just because of Wonga, but it might, it's quite uh, radical also in terms of financial services. And we publish a ton of data to Open Wonga. That we publish data about who our customers are, what the demographics are. We publish case studies, we publish responses, we publish critiques of Wonga as well as contrast to that. We've created a form of media that customers interact with us on and, uh, and other interested parties do, and it's completely open. And we, you know, I would say that we, you know, we, we make available to the public here a lot more data than many public companies make available. And we do that because we've got nothing to hide, because we believe in transparency, and we put it out there for people to have the debate, and we, do, and we welcome the debate, quite frankly. So, you know, responsibility really sits at the core of, of, what, of what we believe we're we're doing to contribute to a better financial services market. And you know, the, the single most gratifying thing about building this business is really how our customers think about us. And you know, there are multiple ways we, we track that and measure it and think about it from Facebook likes to you know, anecdotal conversations. But one of the metrics that we've used since, since we started the company is Net Promoter Score. Do other people use Net Promoter Score, any of your businesses? Oh, great. So I would encourage people to have a look at it. It's just a really easy to use, quite powerful metric. And what you can see here is Wonga's customers are more likely to recommend Wonga to a friend or family member than the customers from companies like Google, Apple, never mind financial services businesses. And that is, at the end of the day, the essence of everything in, in my view. It is worthwhile doing if we are servicing a customer need and customers are happy with it and would recommend it. And they're doing that in droves. So, you know, our net promoter scores are sky high. They're well higher than any bank in the UK or any other financial institution in the UK. But quite frankly, we use as our bar kind of, you know, the best consumer-led businesses in the world. And that's how, you know, that's the metrics. Those are the metrics that we keep stretching to and, and the bar that we set, we set for ourselves. So what, is the, what does the future look like? So, you know, we've always thought about what we're doing as building a platform, as building a platform that uses technology and uses data to solve specific customer needs in the financial services space. And we started off with short-term cash flow loans because it was a space in the market that we felt was being very poorly served where customers were having to fall into overdraft late fees or go to shops on the high street or have people come to their houses. And in, in, in the view that we had, all were substandard and, and customers have responded, I think, fairly democratically by deciding that this solution, being able to go to your mobile phone or going online and being able to solve a short-term cash flow problem on demand is compelling. That's where we started, but that was never the full picture at Wonga. So, you know, We've launched now in four other countries. We're now live, so in you know, five countries and 
you know, th those numbers will be growing over the next year and two and three. And you know, we see this as a play out of London that is genuinely going to be global. But we're also building new products. And you know, the first new product that I'd like to talk about a little bit is a product that we launched uh, middle to late last year, focused on the small business lending space. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a product that uses the, what we think of as the best of Wonga, the speed, the convenience, the transparency, the flexibility, but repurposes it to solve owner-operated entrepreneur problem, the pro problems around free cash flow. We know that almost a third of small businesses in the country have had significant cash flow problems in the last two years. For small businesses, cash flow is the oxygen that they live on. As entrepreneurs here, including myself, yeah, I'll, we, we understand that. Most businesses that don't survive go out of business because they run out of cash, not because of P&L and underlying profitability issues. It's about cash flow issues. So, you know, we can't solve the full quagmire of small business funding issues. We're humble enough to recognize that we, while we think we can make a contribution, we can't solve all the problems that, that small businesses have in accessing the, 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 the wherewithal that they need to grow their businesses. But we also know that small businesses are what will help this economy get out of the stagnation that we're in. It's where employment will come from. It's where growth will come from. And so what we do here is think of ourselves as that last layer on the, in, the, in the ecosystem of funding small businesses. Not to say that small businesses don't need equity, not to say they don't need long-term debt, not to say that they don't need other kinds of facilities. But there comes a time and a place in many, li in many entrepreneurs' lives where a big invoice is paid late, payroll needs to be paid tomorrow morning, another obligation needs to be sorted, a machine in a factory breaks down, and we're going online at 6 o'clock in the evening and getting funding by the next morning so that you're still in business and you get to live and face another day and it's unsecured and you don't, haven't had to put your, whole, your house up for it is a very, very valuable service. And so, you know, very proud to have launched that last year. It's a service that we are intending to grow into a significant business for us. It uses the same data platform, the same technology platform, as a, as a consumer service, but repurposed so that you know, it's bigger loans, up to 30,000 pounds for up to a year. But again, can be paid off early, same, same flexibility, same, uh, same speed and same convenience as the consumer service that we've been speaking about. And a product that we launched earlier this year called Pay Later, which is an e-commerce financing tool and a digital payment service. What is special about the service, again, using the same platform, the risk algorithms, the identification algorithms that we've built at Wonga, is within the trolley, within the basket on an e-commerce site, allowing the consumer to pay in four monthly installment, in four installments for a product, simply helping people smooth the cash flow implications of bigger buys in the online and digital world. And, you know, we're up at over 10 merchants, yeah, the, on the service and, you know, very happy to, but you know, that, you know, conversions are great. We're happy with the metrics. The merchants seem to be happy. The average basket sizes using the service are up over 30%. So, you know, consumer net promoter scores are similar to our core products. So very happy consumers. Merchants are happy. And again, it's, it's using the same platform, the same technology base to be able to solve a consumer problem in, a, in another space. And as us thinking about how we can help people in more situations than the situation that they were in just with the first product, and, you know, and very excited by the prospect, and you know, that together with internationalization is really where Wonga is going. So David, thanks very much for putting this together today. Congratulations, and thanks everyone. <laughs>